Welcome back to some more C2 content. In this one, we will be running this thing in an Active Directory environment, actually taking over a machine that is AD joined and specifically a user that is a member of Active Directory is logged in to the machine. Now here, not much has changed. We're still on our Commando VM, which is our attacker Windows machine. And in particular, not that it matters too much, but just to let you guys know, this is not a domain joined machine. It shouldn't make any difference for us as an attacker in this case, um, at least from the perspective of Covenant. And as you'll see, we can actually access a bunch of built-in Active Directory commands we can just easily run using Covenant in the context of the user that we've taken over, which is on this Windows 10 machine, this is a domain joined machine. And this is just what I ran, you know, the, the generated code that I ran to connect back to our Covenant C2 server. Same as in the last video. If you haven't watched the last video, I would definitely recommend taking a step back, checking that one out. It will show you how I set all this up to begin with and then how, you know, we were able to understand the basics of Covenant. We're going to go a little bit further in this one and specifically target using Covenant against an active directory environment. You know, and if you are watching this content, maybe you're in this field already, you wanna go from pen tester to red team, or maybe you're not even in this field yet, but you're looking to join. You're definitely gonna to wanna to arm yourself with the top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know, because of course the interview will come into play sooner rather than later. So definitely get ahead of the curve and start checking that stuff out now and arming yourself with that information absolutely for free down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into it. And just to give you more clarification on this account here, we see we are B Kendrick. So if I say net user, we can see, uh, well, this is the local users, right? So if I want to look on the domain, we can see we are on the cybercorp.com domain and there's a ton of users. There's about a hundred users on here and we are the B Kendrick users. So if we want to find a little bit more info on them, we can do that also through Covenant as well. But just to show you really quickly on the actual machine itself, what we're dealing with here, right? So we're B Kendrick, which is just a basic domain user. And we have gotten code execution on his workstation. Now in a real situation, right? In a real scenario, it might be through a phishing campaign or a USB drop or even exploiting a vulnerable application that might've been running as this user. There's so many there's an infinite number of ways really that we could get that initial foothold but basically I'm just, I just pasted it in the PowerShell terminal to simulate getting that code execution. If we go to Covenant, we see here that we have gotten code execution on the client 01 machine, which was the computer we were just on as the B Kendrick user. Medium integrity because this user is not an administrator. It's not domain admin, it's not local admin, it's just a regular domain user, user account, right? So. And that's what we can see here. If we click into this, just as before, is where we can start issuing commands and things like that. So what is interesting here is that Covenant was able to grab a lot of info for us related to the domain and things like that. So it was able to recognize that this is on the CyberCorp domain. This is the IP address of the machine. This is the username, host name, uh, Windows version, all of that stuff. So that's pretty handy. And we have that info that it grabbed for us. And of course, just going into the different tasks. The last time we looked at this, and I'll zoom in a bit more here. The last time we looked at this, we saw, we kind of played around with some of the non-active directory commands that we can run. But as we see here, there are a number of active directory specific commands that we can run. So we can do a get domain user. And here's the nice thing too, right? These commands here are really using the .NET framework behind the scenes. Remember, all this stuff is C-sharp uh, when it comes to Covenant. So that allows a lot of nice things for Covenant to easily be able to interact with the .NET framework to basically be able to run commands that you would normally have to upload like PowerView or something for. It's able to just natively access the .NET framework and run these commands without having to 
put that target on the disc. You don't have to transfer any, you know, you don't have to upload any extra scripts or anything to the target, which is obviously great for OPSEC. You know, the fact that we have access to do this stuff without having to, you know, put that footprint on the disc, really nice, right? And as we see here, there's all kinds of stuff we could do. We kind of dove into this a little bit last time, but just to kind of reiterate here, we have Mimi Cats, we have Rubius, we have so many different tools that we could play around with here and even stuff that would be, normally we'd have to upload it onto the target system, which would leave a footprint, which is bad OPSEC. Well, we can just do that here without having to do that. So just to play around with this, get domain user, you pass it in a username. We could look at our own user, the B Kendrick user, but we could also look at any of those users, any of those 100 or so users that are a part of this domain that I was showing you guys earlier. So if we try something like this, we can issue this task by just clicking on the play button. Now it'll bring us to the interact tab and we see here that it's tasked and it went ahead and ran and it came back pretty quickly with all the results. So we can see that we are part of the finance OU and try to make that a little bigger. I know it is pretty small, but uh, it is just a normal account. We can see a lot of information about this account by running this. We can even see information regarding uh, bad password counts, when it was created, when it expires, last login, uh, last logon timestamp, all of that stuff. And so we could do that for a bunch of different accounts. And you know, we even have the SID here. But yeah, we could do this for a bunch of different accounts and start enumerating the entire uh, the entire domain, basically, all the users and things like that, and look for opportunities to move laterally in the environment. Now, just to just to let you guys know, this is a pretty new, newly created Active Directory environment, so I haven't really set up, I haven't went ahead and set up a lot of vulnerabilities or really any vulnerabilities within the domain quite yet. That is coming in the future. Let me know if that's something you're interested in, of course, just to just so I know that this is something that you guys would be interested in seeing, but I really want to have a full on environment here. Uh, here's the domain controller, by the way, if you want to take a look at that, that I had set up where um, I just did the uh, very minimal installation of a Windows 20 uh, Server 2022 Active Directory domain controller, put 100 users on it, and in the future, I want to simulate some different attacks, like uh, have some Kerber roasting that we can exploit, maybe some Azrep roasting, silver ticket attacks, uh, golden ticket as well, perhaps, all kinds of different common Active Directory attacks. We can simulate it in this environment and not only exploit it, but exploit it and use a C2 framework. So very real world, very what you would do on a real red team engagement. You know, and I actually have a, uh, a huge uh, ESXi server sitting behind me uh, in the closet, a little server room going on right here. So yeah, that's pretty cool. We could play around with that. We could have a, a pretty big environment. The sky is really the limit. We'll see how far we want to take this, but uh, yeah. The, that's the cool thing here. This These VMs here, so this Windows VM and this Windows VM, they're not actually running on my machine. They're actually running on an old Dell server. So yeah, it's a pretty cool thing there. And the attacker VM that I'm using, this one here is actually running on my machine. So I have them all networked uh, together in a, basically a uh, mini corporate home network, basically. So that's pretty cool stuff I've been working on lately. That's another reason I haven't created too much content lately. I've been setting up this lab environment as well as dealing with some issues with my tools and, and stuff like that. But let's go back and look at some more things. Uh, yeah, my recording equipment's been giving me some trouble, but we should be back to regular scheduled content here. So I'm pretty excited about that. Hopefully you guys are as well. Let's, let's look at what else we can do here. That was a very simple example, right? And keep in mind, once again, we can always run shell CMD, which would allow us to run whatever custom command we wanted to, to run. So shell CMD. And we could do something like we did before, like, you know, net user domain. Just to show you how we could run some custom commands and stuff like that zoom out a little bit for it, scroll on down, and there you go. 
you see that it came back with all the accounts on the domain. So we could literally just take this and run with it and look into, I don't know, some random accounts here and there, right? So if we wanted to take maybe this account and look into it, we can see, and we could iterate through this and see if there is some kind of privilege accounts in uh, the domain. Now, once again, you know, there are, there are any right now because I haven't really configured anything, but that is something we could do. And we could iterate through this process with um, get domain user and stuff like that, get domain groups, see what groups they're in. All that stuff, a lot of the stuff that you would do normally with PowerView, you could do right inside of Covenant here with a nice built-in command for you. So we could even try, you know, like we said before, privilege escalation stuff. We could run a get system, obviously be pretty noisy, but yeah, we could do these things. We could look at the local accounts, local groups, all kinds of stuff like that. Even some built-in curb roasting. I would love to play around with that once we once we set it up. And some of these things are going to require higher privileges. Stuff like uh, anything involving Mimi Cats, log on passwords, LSA secrets. All that is going to require system level access, which we don't currently have. So we won't be running that in this case. But yeah, this is pretty cool as well. It's screenshot functionality. I can just hit that. And it'll take a screenshot. Let's, let's take a look at that. So we see that it's tasked. And downloading screenshots. And yeah, that is the, the exact window that we were looking at earlier. So it could be handy in a real world scenario. Maybe they the user's on their workstation. They have some sensitive stuff open. Maybe you could get some credentials off of that. Things like that. But... Another way to get credentials is we could play around with key loggers and stuff like that. There's a built-in key logger, I believe. Uh, yep, key logger here. Now, obviously, this is not specific to Active Directory, but just to show you that this is something that exists. It is tasked. And, I mean, if we come over, we come over there and type notepad, start typing some stuff. This is not my password. But yeah, there we go. Um, if we scroll down a little bit here, we can see that's where I was opening Notepad. And it even tells you some of the events that happen, right? Like I clicked in the search bar and I just typed note and I pressed the enter key and then that launched Notepad. Inside of Notepad, I hit the left shift key, right? And then um, typed in the capital T and then this is not my password within notepads so you can actually get pretty granular get a lot of information from this for sure which could be really really handy but yeah a lot of cool functionality of course get information on the computer client 01 maybe dc01 is the host name for the domain controller that's another thing we could get but let's see what info we can get on this client machine and boom you see there is a lot of information that we can get on that as well. So just taking that enumeration you'd normally be doing on uh, an Active Directory and just doing it within Covenant using these nice built-in functions that you don't have to download any di anything to disk in order to do. And that is the benefit of this. So hopefully this one helped you guys. Not anything too crazy, not too much different than using Covenant outside of an Active Directory environment, but most likely if you're using Covenant on a real engagement, I mean, 99% chance, 99.8.9% chance, right? That Active Directory is involved. So definitely something I wanted to cover and demo for you guys. Let me know if you're liking the content so far, and we'll definitely be getting into some more intricate lab stuff here with this Active Directory environment, playing around with various vulnerabilities, like I mentioned. And yeah, I'll see you guys in some technical content right now if you're eager to continue on. Thanks for watching.